National Fisherman Live. I'm Leslie Taylor. Here's some recent fishing news from around the coasts. NOAA recently completed an unscheduled stock assessment that paints a bleak picture of the Gulf of Maine cod population. If peer review upholds the conclusions of the assessment, the New England Fisheries Management Council expects to reduce the annual catch limit for Gulf of Maine cod in 2015, according to the Gloucester Times. The study, performed by NOAA's Northeast Fishery Science Center, has led to concern over the overall health and future of the cod fishery. The preliminary results through 2013 show the cod stock spawning at levels well below those necessary for the biomass to sustain maximum sustainable yield. Spawning was down to 3 to 4 percent of the biomass target from 13 to 18 percent in the 2011 assessment. Annual catch limits were slashed after the 2012 stock assessment to just 1,500 metric tons a year, but Russell W. Brown, Deputy Science and Research Director at NOAA's Northeast Science Center, says this assessment shows cod stocks have not yet responded to the catch limit cuts. Stakeholders are questioning the process that led to the unscheduled assessment, performed well in advance of the scheduled survey in the fall of 2015. In Louisiana this summer, if you order oysters in a restaurant, they may or may not have come from local waters. In fact, they might have come from as far away as the Chesapeake Bay. Because of historically low production of oysters in Louisiana this year, the state has been buying oysters from other Gulf and East Coast states, the Daily Comet reports. For the first time in 43 years, Motivated Seafoods, the leading oyster harvesting and production company in Houma, Louisiana, is importing Chesapeake Bay oysters to keep up with demand, Greg Voisin, Motivated's marketing and sales vice president, told the newspaper. North Carolina has a new set of rules to limit the bycatch of Atlantic sturgeon by implementing a statewide incidental take permit for the endangered sturgeon in the estuarine large mesh and small mesh anchored gillnet fisheries, according to the Jacksonville Daily News. Gillnets may still be used in traditional commercial fisheries such as southern flounder, American shad, and striped mullet, but beginning September 1st, all fishermen who use anchored gillnets in the coastal rivers and sounds of North Carolina will be required to have an estuarine gillnet permit. The permits are free and fishermen convicted of using anchored gillnets in internal coastal waters without holding a permit could be subject to a Class A1 misdemeanor. In addition, the incidental take permit for Atlantic sturgeon requires maintaining a monitoring program that consists of onboard and alternative platform observers. BP says vast numbers of claimants seeking compensation in the class action settlement weren't financially harmed by the 2010 Deepwater Horizon disaster. According to the Houston Chronicle, the company has filed a petition with the Supreme Court to enforce requirements for claimants to show evidence that losses were due to the spill. BP says that current interpretations of the settlement contradict class action law and that a plaintiff should be required to trace his or her injury to a defendant's actions. And the newest draft of the Magnuson-Steven Act, the legislation that provides the framework for fisheries management in federal waters, was released on July 21st by the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Oceans, Atmosphere, Fisheries, and Coast Guard. It proposes changes to fisheries management, including new fees, sustainability standards, and possible national marketing effort, according to the Alaska Journal of Commerce. Among elements proposed, the draft allows councils to charge a fee for management programs that allocate a percentage of the total allowable catch among sectors, and it allows the National Marine Fishery Service to use money received from law enforcement to pay for stock assessments, surveys, and other data collection efforts necessary for managing fisheries. The draft also calls for more data and analysis of recreational fisheries, and it requires stock assessments to be completed at least every five years, and in some instances, more often. For more commercial fishing news and analysis, subscribe to National Fisherman Magazine, visit our website at www.nationalfisherman.com, or subscribe to our twice-weekly e-newsletter. For National Fisherman Live, I'm Leslie Taylor.